Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential equation. We have x squared minus x minus 1 to the power x squared minus x, and that is equal to 1. And we're going to be solving for x values. We can look at two cases here. One is going to be the real case, and the second, the complex case. Let's start with the real case. So when you have an equation like this and you're only looking for real solutions, especially, particularly, integer or maybe rational solutions, then you can do the following. So suppose we have a to the b equals 1, then I can kind of split it up into three cases. b is equal to 0, because when b is 0, any number to the power 0 equals 1. By the way, some people exclude 0, but as you probably know, and as many people believe, 0 to the power 0 is equal to 1, and I made a video about it, you can go ahead and check it out. But um, the base doesn't matter here. Okay. Second case, if a is 1, then the exponent doesn't matter, obviously, right? Because 1, any power of 1 is 1, even in the complex world, right? And the third case is something that we sometimes uh, neglect, is the base is negative 1 and b is even. Even meaning like a number like 2, 4, negative 6, okay? So let's go ahead and go through all these cases, and now we're going to look at the the complex cases, okay? Or the case, complex case. I don't know how many cases we're going to get. So, here's our equation. One thing that makes this problem a little better is, okay, we'll talk about it in the complex case, but here we can go ahead and uh, go through each case. b equals 0. b is what? That one. x squared minus x equals 0. From here, x times x minus 1 equals 0, and that implies x equals 0 or x equals 1. That gives us two solutions. Do we need to check them? Well, it's better if you always check your solutions, especially with radical and sometimes exponential equations. Because with exponential equations, there's an issue with negative base raised to a rational power. So think about something like negative 1 to the power 3 over 4. What would that be? Would that be complex? Real? What do you think? Anyways, so x equals 0 and 1, those are two solutions that we got from case number 1. If you can number these cases like that, and this would be case number 1. All right, so far so good. Case number 2, a is equal to 1, which is the base. By the way, I don't know why I didn't pick b for the base. That kind of makes sense. But anyways, if a is the base and that's equal to 1, uh, that means we get this equals 1, right? And the exponent doesn't matter. Nobody cares, right? We get x squared minus x minus 2 equals 0, and then this is factorable, right, like this. From here, we get x equals 2 and x equals negative 1. Awesome. Two more solutions. But again, checking your work, plug it in, find out what is going on, and hopefully that'll work for you. Okay, let's look at case number 3. And that will be a is negative 1, the base is negative 1, so x squared minus x minus 1 is negative 1, and the exponent is even. Okay, let's find out. First of all, think about it. Is if x squared minus x minus 1 is odd, then x squared minus x is even, so this is satisfied. What do you get from here? Add 1 to both sides. You get the same solutions that you got here. So nothing new, but it was always it's always worth checking. So as a result, we could kind of put these together and looks like we have negative 1, 0, 1, and 2 as the solutions. Now you can definitely go ahead and plug each of these in and check your work. Let's go ahead and do that. Negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And our original equation is what? X, x squared minus x minus 1 to the power x squared minus x equals 1, right? Is that the original problem? I think so. Okay, cool. Now let's go ahead and check our work. If x is negative 1, plug it in. 1 minus 1 minus 1 to the power 1 minus 1. By 1 plus 1, I'm sorry. Uh, it should be a plus 2 because x is negative, so yeah. Okay? So, this one gives you 1 cancels out, 1 to the power 2, which is 1, all good. All right, x equals 0. Plug it in, you get negative 1 to the power 0 equals 1. Correct, right? check, x equals 1, and then if you replace x with 1, 1 minus 1 minus 1 to the power 1 minus 1, kind of like a puzzle, this is 0, negative 1 to the power 0, again 1. 
uh, the two solutions are true for the same reason, but they are different solutions. Make sense? And x equals 2 is going to give us 4 minus 2 minus 1 to the power 4 minus 2. This is 2 minus 1, which is 1. 1 to the power 2 is also 1. And that would give us basically... Oh, by the way, I forgot to put this in parentheses. It does matter because then otherwise it will be negative 1. So this works as well. So it looks like all the solutions are working. They're all valid, right? Do you agree? And what we're going to do is next we're going to check the graph. But before we check the graph, I want to show you. So hang on a little bit. I want to show the complex case. Let's call it second. Okay. How do we consider the complex case? Easy, right? We can use substitution or we can just directly natural log. I would use substitution because why not? And by the way, that also goes for, uh, what's it called? The real solutions, you could also do that. Uh, so this will turn into z minus 1, multiply by, I mean, to the power z equals 1. All right, at this point, we've got to be careful, uh, because if you think about it, I mean, I'm looking for non-real solutions, in other words, right? Complex, if I find complex solutions that are also real, which is possible, right? Then I'll be method 1. So, nothing new. This one, hmm, why don't we just ln both sides, um, ln z minus 1. By the way, instead of ln both sides, a fancier way to do it is using complex exponential, yay. e to the power z ln z minus 1 is equal to 1. And I think, you know what, um, this is a better method because we're not going to leave the 1 alone. We're going to write it as e to the power 2 pi and i. This is to complexify it so that we can go talk about complex solutions. And now we can do this equals this. And I don't think we're going to find solutions from there, but maybe with the help of Lambert's W function? What do you think? Well, here's the, here's the challenge. If I can turn this into z minus 1 times ln z minus 1, then I get a good structure, right? But you can't do it just by multiplication or division. You can't just add, subtract something, right? I mean, you can subtract ln z minus 1 from both sides, but that's not going to help on the right-hand side. We want to keep this as constant as possible. Currently, it's constant, right, for a given value of n. n is an integer, by the way. I think I forgot to say that, right? Cool, cool. So one, another thing I can think, of, think about is maybe uh, to call this w. This becomes w plus 1 times ln w equals 2 pi and I. Now, how can I get ln w plus 1? Again, there's no formula. So I'm kind of stuck here. I don't know if we can complexify it. Maybe there's a way to do it with some other function, whatever. Just let me know what you think, because that's kind of where I got stuck. And this brings us to the graph. As you can see here, the intersection points do seem to be two. Why are there two solutions? That's for you to find out. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.